So how are you feeling? I mean, we're, what, a little more than a month out now. I know, I know. I feel good. I mean, we are definitely the underdog. He's been able to outspend me 10 to 1, and he really sort of has the, uh, the, uh, the political machine in Milwaukee that's behind him, the former supporters of Mayor Barrett and so on. But uh, that's all right. I think Milwaukee uh, needs uh, a change and we need to perhaps go in a different direction. So This isn't your first time no, no, at this not post. At all. You not did this all. six years ago. So yeah. what's different this time? Well, I think the big difference is just in what Milwaukee is going through. Quite frankly, um, 2016 Milwaukee is nowhere near what it is now in 2022. And Where are the I differences? Specifically about the, the extreme public safety challenges that the city is faced with uh, and uh, our fiscal challenges, you know, that back in 2016 they were not as pronounced as they are now. And both of those issues, I think, are whoever the next mayor is, is going to have to really deal with both of them, uh, uh, you know, immediately. You know, you were on Common Council for 20 years. Yeah. What can you accomplish as mayor that you couldn't do in those 20 years on Common Council? Oh, a lot of things. First of all, the mayor sets the pace. The mayor uh, sets the agenda. Um, and the priorities for the city. Oftentimes I would argue with Mayor Barrett as to, you know, what I felt should be the priorities were not his priorities. So the mayor sets the pace, that's number one. Second of all, the mayor has the clout to get things done. He sets the budget uh, very seldom that the budget is amended. You know, it's a, a billion uh, seven uh, budget and if the aldermen change it by a half a million that's a lot mm -hmm. you know so uh, basically what the mayor wants and is able to push through uh, he gets so I think the direction that the mayor sets the priorities that he sets say, uh, thirdly I would argue he's just got a lot of clout uh, if he were to pick up the phone and want something done and reach out to the private sector and so it's so much more clout than just one of the 15 aldermen you know now in my aldermanic district i was very proud of what we were able to accomplish working with the private sector the faith community things like that i want to take that same energy into the mayor's office and do it across Milwaukee and really concentrate on our neighborhoods, which I think are so uh, neglected, especially over the last 10 years. We've concentrated so much on downtown, and don't get me wrong, we all want and need a vibrant, uh, great downtown, exciting downtown, but we've neglected our neighborhoods and I think that's uh, come back to bite us. So you say the mayor gets what he wants. What do you want? If you were to become mayor, what do you want? I want a safer city for all of Milwaukee. I want criminals to be held accountable for their crimes. I want great schools for our kids. All schools, public, private, charter. Um, I want good jobs for this community, good family supporting jobs that are attracted to the area from outside the region and not just stealing a company from West Dallas and bringing them into Milwaukee. Sure, we might get additional property taxes, but not new jobs. You know, those people, wherever they live, are just gonna be the same jobs. So uh, we need a, a much more structured plan in, in all of those areas. So I've been here for seven years, almost seven and a half years now, but my father actually grew up in Milwaukee and then eventually in Whitefish Bay. And he grew up in the late 60s, early 70s, graduated high school in 75. And he remembers as a kid, fourth, fifth grade, taking the bus by himself with his friends down to the yeah. city, playing pickup basketball at Rufus King or some sure. of the other school's playgrounds. Yeah. And nowadays, I mean, when he comes to visit, he'd say, I would never let my grandkids, my children, go down and do the same thing. So, you know, that was 40 years ago. What what has really, I mean, 50 years ago, what has changed in that time period? You know, 
it obviously it's a big picture thing, but sure. like specifically, how did we get? And you said it's even worse than it was six years ago in 2016. Oh, absolutely. I mean, how did we get to where we are? Um, with a crime-ridden city. You know, yeah. there's so much focus on, you know, homicides were up 113% over last year, car thefts up 130% over 2019. So, you know, how did we get here? I think uh, a, a lot of things that have changed, and you're absolutely right. I remember a city of Milwaukee, and born and raised here, a city of Milwaukee that was considered one of America's safest mm -hmm. big cities. Those days are long gone. I think we've seen a lot of things happen over the years. Uh, certainly we lost a lot of good paying, blue collar uh, jobs that were able to support families. But in addition to that, quite frankly, I think we've seen in many instances a deterioration of our families, of what um, the virtues and the values that we're teaching our children. Do you think that that's really important when it comes down to like the crux of where crime originates? You know, a lot of times they talk about poverty, but you know, that yeah, family yeah. unit, that's spoken about a lot too. Absolutely, it is vitally important. I mean, that's the first most important unit of any a successful society. So we need to uh, foster initiatives and programs that help uh, our families to stay intact, to raise kids in the appropriate environment. It's sad, and I have often seen over the years, children growing up in very challenged environments where they're not getting the love and the structure that every child needs. And yes, the discipline. That's so important that kids be taught at an early age the difference between right and wrong and that there are consequences for their bad behavior. Uh, when that doesn't occur, and then you have a system that for a variety of reasons is lax and does not hold them accountable at that higher level, they grow up in an atmosphere where anything goes. So yeah, I think there are a lot of things that uh, have changed over the years. We need to, in, in my estimation, take a firmer hand on a lot of those issues and, and work to get uh, some of our kids out of the bad environments they're currently in. You know, a lot of times, you know, there's a lot of talk about resources and this program and this initiative and pumping millions of dollars in funding into this, whether it is violence prevention or it is strengthening the family unit. You know, I think that a lot of times we hear from viewers that are just frustrated, like you guys talk all the time about all of this money and you're going to this program and this initiative, but what are they actually doing? Like, what are these people actually doing day in and day out? And so you kind of seeing the underbelly of how the city works for so many years that you were involved in it, you know, I'm sure you've seen the good uses of the money, the bad uses of the money, the wasteful uses of the money. So like, what do you think actually works when it comes to the day in and day out and helping to get kids back onto the right path, helping to improve those family units? Yeah, well certainly I would argue this, you're absolutely right when it comes to oftentimes wasting, in many instances, millions of dollars, pouring good money after bad into programs that aren't really successful. My uh, concern and my uh, idea is to back things that work. And if we have been funding an agency or a, a department or an initiative that's not working, we certainly can't afford to continue to fund that. Second of all, I would insist as mayor on an audit that be conducted of every city department, every agency that tax dollars are going into to ensure before we go hat in hand to the state of Wisconsin for financial help, we need to prove to them and also to all of our taxpayers that every single penny coming into Milwaukee is being spent wisely. So, and I will say another thing too, it's often been my experience that good successful programs are taking place in other communities we can't be afraid of taking that idea and implementing it here, right here in Milwaukee. Maybe we fine tune it a little, whatever, but we can do that. So I'm confident another thing that I would certainly want to do more of 
is a more aggressive outreach to our faith community. I strongly believe that our faith community will be critical towards improving the stability and the order and safety in our neighborhoods. So I would envision uh, our police department working hand in hand with our faith community to uh, patrol our neighborhoods, to do outreach to young people who might be on the verge, but with a little tender loving care and a little attention, they fall the right way as opposed to falling the wrong way. You're a very faith-filled man, right? If I'm not mistaken, you were considering going into the priesthood. Uh, well, yes. At, at one point. At one time, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, tell me a little bit more about that and just kind of your, your, your draw to that. Well, I uh, grew up and uh, uh, my parents, uh, God rest their souls, just wonderful people. I'm very blessed, my brothers and I, to have both our parents. And, you know, they were a great example mm -hmm. to us. And they um, were devout Catholics. Um, and I had uh, my dad's cousin was a Catholic priest and I admired him. Uh, and I was very lucky to uh, in, in both uh, grade school and high school have some good relationships with Catholic priests that were great models and so on. So I thought that, yeah, perhaps uh, I was an altar boy. You know, I mean, you just, it was sort of part of your culture growing up. And uh, the uh, church was very much a part of our um, family life. Uh, my mom was involved with home and school and then there was the Christian women's organization and my dad was involved in a men's club called the Holy Name Society and uh, my brothers and I, we were all involved in in uh, the Catholic Youth Organization, CYO. So it was all so, very yeah. social for you yeah. too. Yeah, there, there was a social aspect yeah. without a doubt. We played sports at the schools we uh, attended and mom and dad uh, sent us to Catholic grade school yeah. and Catholic high school. So you were exposed so, to it a lot. Yeah, 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 absolutely, sure, yeah. Imagine what your life would have turned out if you became a priest. Oh boy, oh boy, <laughs> well, I, I, yeah. But I will tell you this, it took me a little while, almost a year of retirement, for me to realize that my real vocation in life is public service. That's my and, next question. Yeah. You've been retired for not even two years, yeah, technically. Yeah, yeah. What made you want to jump back in? Are you bored? It was, well, you know, I did a little twiddling of my thumbs and I thought, geez, I'm not ready to, you know, uh, move on. I, And then, of course, Mayor Barrett made that announcement that he was leaving and I turned to Kathy and I says, we've got to do this. You know, this is an opportunity. And what'd she say? Oh, not again. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, she was with me and she always has been. So that's... That's been a real plus, she's a rock. Having said that, um, again I say that I realize that that's my vocation, it's what I get fulfillment from. And another thing too that I have to tell you, and I ran across uh, a sermon at church where the priest was talking about living a significant life. He said everyone wants a successful life and that's usually um, gauged in money or home or cars you drive and so on. He says, I want you to consider living a significant life, a life that makes a difference in other people's lives. And so all of this sort of just came together and I said, well, all right, we're going to do this. And it's a huge challenge without a doubt. And I am definitely the underdog, but I will tell you this. Um, I just had to do this, and I uh, believe strongly that if given the opportunity, we can tackle these problems and get Milwaukee moving again. You know, I know that you wrote, or you actually you said, um, when you left Common Council in 2020, you quoted Teddy Roosevelt, and you talked about being in the arena with dust and sweat and blood on your face. Are you ready to get back into the arena to get blood, dust, and sweat all over your face <laughs> yeah. again? Well, I hope not too much blood, but sweat certainly. Uh, yes, I am. I, I Again, I feel uh, strongly that I have still a great deal to contribute. I still have the energy and the commitment and the determination 
to get Milwaukee moving in the right direction. And I've never been an individual to sweep the problems under the rug. I've always tried to be upfront and honest with the citizens. Okay, these are our challenges. This is what I'm hoping to do, getting enough people around the table, fashion a strategy, and move forward. And if it doesn't work, okay. You stand up and you have the guts to say, all right, we tried, it doesn't work, let's do it this way and try something else. You know, people call you fighting Bob, right? Well, do, some do. you do. like that? Some do. I uh, Have you grown uh, yeah, to like that uh, over the years? That, that, if they want to call me that, that's fine with me. I've been called off uh, awful worse things, I might add, but uh, fighting Bob's okay with me. You know, there are a lot of people who say that, you know, there's been division within the city of Milwaukee itself, um, in the local government, but also between the city of Milwaukee and Madison. Um, some would say that you're kind of a divisive person. How would you help bridge that, and how would you prove them wrong if you were to get the mayoral post? Well, I think um, uh, when I took over as alderman, um, and there was, that was sort of a divisive first uh, election and the guys that I ran against and so on. And I felt I was able to bring everyone together. I'm not the kind of guy that holds a grudge if somebody uh, opposed me on an issue. I don't keep that in the back of my mind. I'm going to get him someday down the road. That's not the way I operate. Now, I, I do have the courage of my convictions. What I believe in, I... Uh, and, and can back it up, I will speak that and push that particular agenda. But I also am the kind of person that has an open door policy. I think any of my former colleagues will tell you that. Very seldom ever had the door closed on my office. Anyone could come in and talk. And that's what I want to convey to the citizens of Milwaukee. I will meet with anyone, any individual, any group who is interested in improving this city at least once. And I'll be able to ascertain if they maybe have some hidden agenda. But if they're serious about improving Milwaukee, I will go to the wall for them and I will work with them. And I'll also say this, for 20 years I represented a district probably one of Milwaukee's most diverse districts. A lot of people don't recognize that. I didn't represent a semi-suburban, just white-only district. My district was 70% minority, large Latino population, uh, but an increasing African-American population, uh, Asian, Hmong population, Native American, white. It was a very diverse district. And they returned me to office five times because I took care of business and I got things done. And I feel that that's precisely the qualities we need in the next mayor of Milwaukee.